So, hello and welcome to the next session. Um, uh, Chris and uh, Jean Frederick uh, are, are going to talk about uh, connecting Tomcat to the world. What performance and other considerations uh, you have to keep in mind when selecting a Tomcat connector. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm Chris Schultz. This is Jean Frederic Claire. This uh, presentation grew out of uh, some work that I did a couple of years ago on just presenting some performance metrics uh, of the connectors themselves. Um, and um, the presentation was not well received because my methodology was not very good. So uh, Jean Frederic was uh, very helpful in, in helping me fix that. Um, and uh, he's going to spend the second half of uh, today's talk uh, actually presenting those numbers. And, uh, and talking about the implications of them. Did you want me to say anything else before we get started? No, no, that's OK. OK. OK, so uh, this is us. Um, <coughs> so a uh, bit of an overview on, uh, I'm going to talk about connectors and uh, styles of IO operations uh, to give you a framework for the rest of the discussion. So Tomcat connectors perform two main tasks. Uh, they bind to a port, and they dispatch incoming requests to request processing threads. Uh, while the connectors are conceptually simple, they are actually really ugly and complicated under the covers. Um, and uh, that has led to the existence of several different kinds of connectors. And they each have different characteristics and strengths. The connector understands uh, multiple line protocols. Uh, we're mostly going to be ignoring those differences and instead focusing on the architecture behind the I.O. strategy. Uh, because that's where they really make the difference. Um, let me see. So these are the four types of connectors. There's actually technically eight because they speak different protocols. Um, but there's the Java blocking I.O. connector, which is the oldest of the implementations. It's sometimes called BIO for blocking I.O. or uh, sometimes even J.I.O., which stands for Java I.O. Uh, several years ago, there was the APR connector, which is native, and then there was the one that was not native, so that's why they sometimes are called Java I.O. versus APR. Um, is this going to happen a bunch of times? It's going to be really frustrating. Sorry. Uh, in, order to, in order to collaborate, we decided to use... Export. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't work out very well. It didn't work. Okay, so bear with me just a second. Hopefully, the we graph, won't have to do this too graph many are times. Completely destroyed. In order to collaborate, we chose to use uh, Google Drive, and so we may have to to bail. Let me do that just in case we need to switch. Pardon us, uh, just a moment. It's supposed to work. <laughs> we, tr we tried it before. It worked. I have a slightly older version that I can load up here. OK. That team that played that game. Downloading Open Office. <laughs> I'm not sure. There we go. Okay. So everything got smaller when we exported. <coughs> so uh, originally there was the, the, native, uh, the native, which is APR, uh, based on Apache Portable Runtime. That's what that stands for. Uh, and the Java connector, which is why sometimes it's called JIO. These days we tend to standardize on the BIO, blocking IO, versus NIO, which is either new IO or non-blocking IO. Uh, and then actually just this month, 
there is now an NIO2 yeah. connector, which is available, uh, which has uh, some, some different characteristics as well. So I want to do a quick overview of types of I.O. if you don't know what this non-blocking versus blocking, et cetera, means. Um, the, uh, the most basic thing you could possibly do if you're trying to get data into a process is to do polling. So if you've ever used BASIC or C or uh, a, a, a language that, that gives you very low-level primitives like this, um, there, you can use something like a peak, where you just say, is there anything in the keyboard buffer? Um, and it's very CPU inefficient because you have to sit there and you have to loop and check over and over and over again. You're never really sure whether there's data available. You constantly have to look. Uh, and the thread is looping the entire time. So you're just burning CPU time and not actually accomplishing anything. Uh, it also means that your code is really ugly because you have to have the loop, you have to have state management, you have to have error checking, you have to have all of this infrastructure to support this terrible uh, idea. Uh, and then, you know, it doesn't turn out to be very good in the first place. So uh, then you can use uh, an alternative, which is a, a blocking API. And that has a very straightforward API. You call read and you wait for the data to come in. And when the call exits, you have the data that you were looking for. Uh, it's very CPU efficient. While you're waiting for the data, your thread is actually not burning CPU. So then there was the concept of uh, uh, non-blocking, uh, because sometimes you want to be able to do more than one thing at one time. Um, this actually has a fairly complicated API. You need to register your interest in certain events. You get event callbacks. Um, instead of just having a stream that you can read from or write to, you have channels, you have buffers, you have selectors. Good news is it's very CPU efficient. Uh, and the thread is not required to, I don't know why the, the uh, word is not in there, the thread is not required to wait. The execution continues, so you indicate your desire to get data, and then you can go off and do other things. When the data is ready, the selector will tell you where the data is available and what you can do with it. So back to the connectors themselves. Uh, all connectors support all protocols. Technically speaking, they're different implementations of the various connectors, but all of these blocking, non-blocking, native, um, and NIO2 connectors all support uh, HTTP, HTTP, and WebSocket. So you don't have to pick and choose. They're interchangeable. Um, they also support all dispatch methods, so uh, a standard web servlet dispatch, uh, as well as Comet and the uh, servlet as uh, async uh, APIs if you're using those. And they all support HTTPS. They all have what's called an acceptor thread, which uh, accepts incoming requests and then uh, multiplexes those out to the, uh, or hands them off to um, request processing threads. Uh, and they all have request processing thread tools. So the blocking I.O. connector, as you might imagine, uh, all the I.O. operations that we, uh, that we use are, are blocking. There's five types of uh, I.O. operations that we'll talk about here. Um, there's uh, SSL negotiation. There's reading the request line. And I believe that also includes the headers, yes? Uh, yes. OK. So, Tomcat reads the request line that's coming in from the client as well as the headers. And after that point, it decides where it's going to dispatch that, uh, that to. And, and you'll see uh, later that there's, a, um, there's an advantage to waiting until after the headers are available, not necessarily with the blocking I.O. connector. Um, <clears throat> reading the request body, writing the response body, and the final thing here is uh, this read next request. There's never a good way to explain this in a few number of words. If a client is doing pipeline HTTP requests, so it's keep alive, you make one connection and you make multiple requests. The, uh, the next request here uh, is talking about requests after the first one that comes in that pipeline. So if you're using HTTP keep alive, that's what's happening. All of those operations are done using blocking reads. They're all done using the request processor thread. So if you have 150 threads in your request, pool, or request processing pool, uh, you can only be SSL handshaking, request line, et cetera. You can only be doing any of those things with 150 connections. Once you've hit 150 connections, you're done. If anyone was here for Mark's presentation just prior to this, uh, he said that for the blocking I.O. connector, 
there is an option where you can disable keep alives when you get busy. And the reason is because you don't want to tie up all of your threads uh, on keep alive connections. It's simple, it's stable, it's mature. Uh, and as Mark mentioned, it's probably going to go away. Um, but uh, generally speaking, if you're having a problem with one of the other connectors, rolling back to the blocking I.O. connector will usually help you figure out whether or not it's your application or if there's some kind of bug in Tomcat. So as I mentioned, a single thread handles the request straight through after the accept. So once the connection has been accepted, uh, everything happens on the same thread after that. Uh, it also uses uh, JSSE for SSL. Um, and uh, so all the crypto operations are happening through Java, which has some important consequences that I'll discuss a little bit later. Actually, we will discuss. Yeah, <laughs> I will speak about that part. Sure. So <clears throat> the, uh, the blocking connector has some negative attributes here. Specifically, it's being limited by the available threads. If you have your thread pool size, dictates the number of connections that you can deal with at once. So if you are uh, implementing a messaging server and you need to have tens of thousands of connections at once, you need to have an enormous number of threads to handle them. And it's not really feasible to do that kind of thing. Uh, it also happens to be uh, what I call unfair, because when you do HTTP pipeline requests, um, the connection has priority. All the requests on a a connection that's already been accepted have priority over new connections. So uh, requests aren't sort of requeued after the first keep alive request is processed. Um, it, gets, uh, it gets priority over requests that may have technically come in earlier. Uh, and remember, please, uh, please remember that requests and connections are not one to one. Uh, can't really state that uh, more strenuously. So um, non-blocking uh, I.O. connector does things a little bit differently. Again, a single thread handles uh, the request after the request line, um, but that is actually a serverless spec requirement. So um, that's going to happen, actually, for all of these connectors. Um, however, there is uh, there's a thread which is called the polar thread, and it handles these operations uh, before handing off to the request processing thread. So we, we uh, it says read SSL handshake. It's technically two-way. So it handles SSL handshakes, uh, reads the request line in the headers, uh, then it gets dispatched. And when it's time for uh, a keep line or a pipeline follow-up request, uh, it goes back into the polar thread. So there's an opportunity for um, uh, there's an opportunity for a thread switching to go on there, which is which has a good a nice advantage. So as I mentioned, the servlet spec has a requirement that a single thread handles the complete request from beginning to end. Um, so essentially, once the service method is called on your request, the same thread has to process it start to finish. So if you're reading the request body or you're writing the response body, even though you're using non-blocking I.O., there is a blocking API which is in use, the streams API. and so. Since the underlying connector is using non-blocking I.O. and the API you're using is appearing to use blocking I.O., we need to do simulated blocking. So we write a little bit of data, uh, we wait around for a little bit, uh, and then we check to see if it's been written, et cetera. Uh, and there's actually a, a cost to that, which is measurable. Uh, again, we use JSSE for SSL, and um, this is the first of the connectors that support something called send file which is great. Um, send file is actually a, a, a kernel call. And what it does is you can, open up a, um, you can open up a file handle to a static resource. And you already have the file handle to the socket, which is writing back to the client. And you just plug them together in the kernel. And the kernel takes care of everything. So you don't have to go back and forth doing reads uh, and messing with a whole lot of buffers. It's a, a very high performance way to deliver static content. Yeah. We will see it in the, in the slides I have. So uh, sort of upshot of the non-blocking I.O. Connect connector is that uh, it alleviates a lot of the problems that the blocking I.O. connector has, specifically with scaling. Uh, a, a 
comparatively small number of threads can handle a huge number of connections and requests. Uh, and misbehaving clients, like those that would connect and use a keep alive, but then never actually give you a, uh, a follow-up request, uh, the blocking I.O. connector will wait for, I think the default is 30 seconds for a follow-up request. So if the client doesn't hang up the phone, if it's lazy and leaves the thing open, your thread is sitting there for 30 seconds accomplishing absolutely no work. That does not happen with this non-blocking I.O. connector. Aborted keep alive will ultimately die in the polar queue. Zero CPU time wasted, zero thread time wasted. Um, and, uh, and slow clients don't stall threads. So um, if, uh, if it takes a while to do uh, SSL negotiation or it takes a while to, uh, um, uh, to, to do that, um, that follow-up pipeline keep alive request, it's not going to slow down your server. It's not going to impact other users of your services. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to mention is that simulated blocking does add overhead, and it's, we can actually see it in the performance test that we've done. So the native connector is, uh, it predates the NIO connector, and at the time it was the only way to get similar non-blocking uh, IO. And uh, now that the NIO connector is available, the APR connector is a little less important. There are some other advantages not related to I.O., which is nice, um, which I'll uh, talk about in just a second. Um, so one of the advantages that, that it does have over the non-blocking I.O. connector is that I mentioned that an I.O. connector needs to use simulated blocking when uh, reading request body and writing response body. Uh, APR connector actually does use blocking reads and writes which means that that overhead associated with the simulated blocking is gone or never existed for the APR connector, uh, which is very nice. Um, some operations do block the processor thread, uh, specifically the SSL handshake and the reading of the, re of the request line. But the most important thing is that, let's see. Hold that thought one second. We use OpenSSL for SSL and TLS, which gives a significant performance advantage, also supports send file just like the NIO connector does. Um, and so this is the advantage I was just about to say is slow clients, uh, sorry, not, uh, this is not the advantage. <laughs> uh, there it is, Come. aborted keep alive die in the polar queue. So uh, that was the most important thing that APR brought to the table at the time. Um, and it, it, it still does. So slow clients can stall threads um, and just like the blocking I.O. connector, uh, request throughput is, again, limited by thread count, which is a little unfortunate. Um, but uh, OpenSSL offers performance advantages, as long as nobody's reading the memory out of your server. And uh, uh, it's sort of a mixed bag here. Uh, the native Because it's native code um, that's being added, it's not supported by the JVM, it's, uh, you know, it's our code, um, you do risk JVM instability. Uh, and so you can bring down the JVM if something is going wrong with the APR <coughs> connector. That doesn't happen very frequently, but when it does, your process is gone. So that's not terribly. Did anything that have to change? Uh, I, I think we, I changed those slides, yes, a bit. W you want me to check again? If it's, we get the connection, it's better to use the. Uh, okay, so jean frederic is going, to, is going to take over now and discuss the, the uh, NIO2 connector as well as some of the, and, and present the performance data that we have. And since that's where most of the changes to our slides occurred, we are going to try. We're going to try Google Drive again. All right. This one, okay. No, no, I can, I, I can do it with this one. Um, yeah. So um, we have created a new um, uh, connector, which it, is using an, uh, another framework called Java 7. Uh, it's the NIO2. Uh, I write no blocking with code because, in fact, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, completely asynchronous. It means uh, we use future and things like that. Um, we, we are forced to have a single thread that handles the request after we 
have the all uh, all the others like like before. Um, uh, the handling of threads, in fact, it is not done in uh, in Tomcat. It's done uh, in the framework. Uh, we use uh, asynchronous channel group to do that, and there are completion codes that are going to be uh, called when needed. Uh, for example, uh, for the uncheck, uh, for the uncheck uh, with SSL, it's a bit funny because basically uh, you have a task and a wild task, and then you process a thing one by one, and you don't really have a control. You need to run it. Um, and um, the, the the thread are also when uh, when you're waiting for the next keep alive, you don't have a, an active thread at that time. It's going to come with a, with a completion. So uh, as I was saying, it's uh, take care of anything blocking with a future object uh, instead of waiting from the I/O, for example, for the request uh, while uh, until uh, to read the the body in the post, for example to write the response. Um, for the response write, it's a bit tricky. In some cases, it might be that we can't guarantee that we still have the same thread, because basically it's completion. But uh, that should not affect uh, the servlet, because basically you are finished and it's just in the buffer. Um, it uses uh, GSSA to do the SSL. And uh, it does not have a send file because the uh, NIO2 does not uh, provide a send file. So we emulate it. I mean, we have the exactly the same API. And uh, we have a big buffer. And then we just wait until the completion routine is called to send the next piece of the buffer. So it it's does not have a real send file. just emulate one. So uh, the it does not move anymore. I think again. Suggestion. I'm lost a bit. Um, Okay, um, so it's, uh, it's like the uh, NIO uh, connector, it's a, a huge number of parallel requests. Uh, it is not limited by uh, the um, classical uh, uh, processor thread, which is uh, blocking. Uh, the so client, as, as the NIO, the so client are not going to style the thread. Uh, the high uh, level of abstraction uh, and o o over the given by the uh, the framework, uh, um, it's going to add a bit of overhead, but uh, um, it allows us to have a lo lot simpler code because a lot of the logic is, is done by this. Sorry, it's disturbing. A lot of the logic is done by the framework. I think we should. We can switch back because. I was. Yes. Yeah. It's not a demo effect. It's just we are not lucky. <laughs> We've been working uh, all days on it. Okay. So. Um, now I'm going to uh, present results, basically, because the, the goal of the presentation is to explain how the things are inside. But the most important is to give some hints of what to choose. So um, to make the load test, uh, basically, I was using the uh, Apache Bench uh, uh, program from uh, the HTTPD project. And uh, we just tried to transfer files, because that's the first thing we're trying to comp we're trying to see if we can use Tomcat uh, to replace HTTPD. And uh, so that way we just, the test consists in uh, signing files which are growing, and we try to see uh, which performance we are able to reach. So um, uh, this is with uh, one thread. AB is not, uh, Apache Bank is not very good in this, so you can see that it's, with one thread, it, it's not able really to see anything, like it's 
it's very noisy. We can't tell exactly what happened. Um, if we look to the CPU usage, so basically uh, uh, I'm running the test one after the other. So the first, this is uh, this is the CPU uh, usage, and this is the time. And uh, unfortunately, this moved a bit. Uh <laughs> so uh, uh, this is we try to compare HTTPD with uh, Tomcat. So uh, here we have uh, HTTPD. Uh, here you have the DIO, uh, and uh, then you have uh, app. You have appear with SSL, appear, uh, uh, one, two, that's a bit, uh, it's, yeah, we have, uh, yeah, the GIO, the appear with SSL, without SSL, then the NIO, uh, and so on. The order is just, the slide is a bit destroyed, sorry. Then when we try with more threads, like uh, it which is just the C parameter of the concurrency parameter of uh, EB, uh, the Apache bench, uh, then we then we see that basically uh, the performance are not very different. Like we get the same throughput, and then for some reason I have a very powerful machine and a very good uh, the network, but I was stopped, and then I asked why, and then I just get the answer today that. Uh, Network was not configured correctly, so <laughs> it took them two weeks to figure out that there was something wrong. So this is why, at some point, the performance, the, the, the things stay together, and we can't really give a conclusion because basically we we want to see what happens when we increase the size of the file. That should increase the the throughput we can we are able to do. So here yeah, we can see that the uh, that. Uh, HTTPD stays still with a low uh, load that and the GIO is using a bit more and then when uh, we have the NIO uh, connector and then the, um, the NIO2 are also consuming quite a lot of uh, CPU. So we increase number of threads, doesn't, doesn't give more clues. We, we re re really we are not able to we are able to tell that basically the choice of connector doesn't matter that much apparently. There is there is one thing that I'd like to point out, which is uh, so. Apologies for these. The the NIO and the NIO two uh, performance is is all in this area. Yes. Um, yes. And what you're seeing is there's a lot of CPU usage in here, and that is as a result of the simulated blocking which is going on. So if you have a blocking connector, which is this second band here, the blocking connector actually has slightly better performance because it's not, it's not going through those hoops that are necessary uh, in order to pretend like you're blocking and instead not blocking. So there's a measurable CPU effect that, that we can see right here. And remember, we are sending files, so it's not a real uh, servlet application. With and without send file <coughs> use. So uh, then I'm going, usually you use Tomcat, uh, in, in you have a, a proxy, and then uh, you have the different uh, Tomcat backend. Uh, that's mostly my customer are using uh, Tomcat like that. So they have HTTPD in front, and then a bunch of uh, Tomcat, like say four, five nodes uh, that run the web application. I don't know if you use a proxy in your case or no. Someone using a proxy? Quite a lot of people. Uh, so uh, the 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 proxy uh, test have been done, uh, you of course, using uh, HTTPD as a proxy, and uh, with Tomcat 8 as a Tomcat, and uh, in order to try to have a something which more look like a real load, uh, we are use we have been using. A for uh, Apache Bench program started on uh, four different uh, nodes, and uh, and uh, ah, what I want to add is that the connection in this case the connection between uh, uh, HTTPD and Tomcat is a local host connection because basically as I had issue with the network uh, I didn't want to uh, measure the network again, 
I hope that I have an, I will still be accepted to make the presentation in Budapest and then ho hopefully my network guys will have fixed the network and that I will have real value to show. <laughs> so uh, again with one, with one, uh, this is with one, um, this is with a single uh, thread running. Uh, you, you can see it's quite hard to, to give a conclusion. Uh, what, what we can, uh, what what we, we what we can see is that uh, of course HTTPD is uh, is very fast, which is this uh, first curve, and we see that the Tomcat uh, eight with SSL is the low is the low one because I have compared all the all the things together because basically the idea is to say okay using a proxy does it is it a good idea is it not a good idea, and then even with this first with this first slide, we can see that using a proxy seems to be a good idea. So about the CPU usage, so it's the CPU usage is then, of course, is a HTTPD plus Tomcat. So here the, oh, here the, the thing is corresponding correctly. So this is uh, just HTTPD, uh, just Tomcat 8, AGP, uh, it's AG pro proxy, mod proxy, AGP, mod proxy, HTTPD, and mod GK. So as you can see, basically, um, wh when you are pro proxying, uh, it doesn't matter much uh, which kind of connector you're going to use. The, uh, at the CPU usage, it's kind of similar. Then we... Then I have been increasing the number of, uh, of the, uh, uh, increase the concurrency in uh, Apache Bench. And then <laughs> here we have a very funny uh, effect uh, of the proxying. Like uh, uh, this is uh, HTTPD and this is while proxying. It looked like that the proxying make the things faster. It's just because, <laughs> in fact, uh, AB uh, Apache Bench uh, give a, um, an average value. And due to the uh, the way the timing is is changed, then the apparently we get a better throughput. But I'm sure we don't get a better throughput. It's just that using a proxy in a kind of uh, uh, change the way uh, the load is uh, is handled. And uh, Apache Bench instead being blocked uh, doing the open, then blocked doing the write, uh, is is really going. The, the things are going to be distributed another way. So this is a bit why we get this some curve that look a bit weird. Yeah, you were afraid when <laughs> I was showing them. Um, I think I have one more, s one more slide with the thread. Like, uh, well, with the CPU usage, you, n you notice that with this, you really, f when, when you have something which is like that, we reached the point saying that maybe you should not use m more because the, the machine is nearly exhausted. So I've tried with, this is the next slide, so I've tried with more trade and it's still apparently uh, stayed like that. The, the, well, the thing is one with one trade, I. In, in, I have made the one, uh, it's a concurrency one trend. I make a lot of measurements and the results are quite random. And this is due to the, the tool I was using. Uh, Apache Bench uh, is not made to test a single connection. So uh, uh, you see the Tomcat with SSL down. So I mean, if you connect directly Tomcat, uh, then basically uh, you, you get that's the worst case in all the tests I've been doing. So uh, you should not use uh, Tomcat with SSL directly if you can have a proxy. I, I would like to point out that in this case, the only the 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 only curve there that is being shown using the Java crypto is Tomcat eight. Everything else is using um, everything else is using OpenSSL. So. It's getting a performance advantage right out of the box. Uh, that makes Tomcat look bad, uh, and it really shouldn't be. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So 
uh, I've been increasing number of threads and basically get the same kind of uh, thing. So to to choose the uh, uh, to choose the connector, uh, uh, at the end uh, we we see that the that the, the proxy are not doing too bad, but uh, Moji K is also not doing too bad. I think two curves are together. Here, this is where you get this weird color. And it's reproducible. So I've been increasing the number of, uh, I've been increasing the concurrency, and uh, apparently I had a, a problem because one of the uh, things that didn't work well. I, I didn't have time to redo the test. Uh, the test takes quite a bunch of hours, so I, I'm sorry, but I'm sure that <laughs> uh, this graph is not perfect because it basically sh basically it should go with the other curve. Then I've been doing uh, some SSL test with AB on the four different. This is. What was it? Uh, Ah, uh, yeah. This is uh, so. Um, this is with one thread, and uh, so uh, this is a kind of the same kind of test we were doing. This, uh, uh, this is um, HTTPD, and then we have the different uh, connectors. Then, with one, we can see that with the oh, this is completely broken. <laughs> So we can still see that uh, with this one uh, connection, it doesn't bring in uh, any interesting things. <laughs> so we increase the concurrency uh, to see uh, a bit where it's going. So we can uh, still see that HTTPD is going faster doing SSL. And then, um, then we have a pair because, it, of course, it's used OpenSSL too. So basically, we get a uh, good performances there too, and then the other connector basically behave the same way. And uh, so with the CPU, uh, you can see that uh, HTTPD does it very well, and then uh, we also feel the machine uh, quite easily doing uh, crypto. So I was increasing the thing, and still kind of same. Okay. Um, you want to comment this one, or? Um, yeah, this is where this is where the slides diverge from what we had intended to to yeah to present. All right. Um, so let's see. Did we? Right. This slide doesn't actually need to exist because uh, we already introduced the the proxy performance and uh, and showing the differences between whether you use. Uh, uh, mod proxy HTTP, mod proxy AJP, or mod JK. Uh, so what I'll do is um, back up to those. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things. We get a lot of questions about whether or not you should use AJP or HTTP for the protocol between HTTPD and Tomcat. Um, and uh, Mark gave some detail about that earlier today, uh, about w when you might want to choose one versus the other with respect to uh, pushing SSL information back and forth or how complicated or not it is to configure the two. Uh, I'll pull out these, these curves for you. This, for whatever reason, <laughs> is Apache HTTPD with SSL. Um, and so this would be no proxy. Mod JK with SSL is somewhere in there and actually can't be seen. It's the yellow, it's the yellow curve. It must be following exactly uh, an, another one of these. Um, yeah, so, uh, so proxy HTTP is this light one and mod JK is, is this one right here. Um, it, it appears to be that if you uh, if you want to make a decision between using HTTP or AJP between the two, performance is not your number one consideration. 
And uh, that's actually one of the, the lessons that we sort of learned from this. We expected that we were going to see some very clear winners and losers when it came to performance testing. So we would say, oh, you should absolutely positively use this connector. You should absolutely positively use uh, um, you know, this um, protocol between them or something like that. And, and what we found after doing all of this is uh, what is far more important is your network configuration <laughs> uh, and the, the, t the type of load that you expect to take, your, your, your request profile, uh, if you will. So I had expected performance to be a, a differentiating factor, and it turns out that performance is not a differentiating factor. So forget performance. Everything performs really, really well. There's only one performance differentiator between any of these things that we've tested, and that's the difference between using Java crypto and using OpenSSL crypto. And it, the, clear winner, the clear winner is OpenSSL crypto. Um, so if you, if you want to make a choice based on performance, make that choice. But there are a number of different ways to, to, to get yourself OpenSSL crypto. So go for that. Everything else, you should make your decisions based on other criteria. Uh, and specifically, um, using, and this is an example that, that Mark illustrated really well earlier today, uh, using a blocking connector for a non-blocking or otherwise asynchronous uh, uh, <laughs> dispatching strategy doesn't make any sense at all because um, the, it's far easier to simulate blocking I.O. with a non-blocking connector than it is to do the opposite. And in fact, it's essentially impossible, right? More. Okay, for the benefit of the recording, Mark is actually crying into his laptop right now. So, um, uh, so, so that, that's really the, the upshot of our, uh, our presentation is that uh, performance isn't really not the di differentiating factor. Uh, choose, choose other criteria to determine uh, which connector you choose. And uh, so the slides earlier in the presentation that, that describe the differences between those should help you, help you make that decision. Did you want to add anything else? I think that's okay. All right. We'd love to answer any questions that you might have, or are we out of time? No, no. Okay, I perfect. Yeah, Go ahead, Chris. I, I just want to know, um, I'm, using, um, I'm using Mod GK uh, to communicate between HTTP and my Tomcat, um, but we, we started using uh, Blaze DS uh, streaming connections, and that totally broke. It's sort of like uh, an HTTP connection is open, but the socket is kept open, and data comes in little chunks. So it's something like like a, a WebSocket connection, and uh, with ModGK it didn't work at all. Uh, so is there an alternative? Uh, oh, so uh, that 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 brings up something that I, I'm sure Mark was going to cover very soon, uh, which is that uh, you you can't proxy WebSocket connections through HTTPD into Tomcat. I think you can't do it at all. Is that correct? Yes. So for so for the benefit of the recording, Mark says it, it may be possible in some specific scenarios, but uh, it's it's a it's a bit fragile, and uh, uh, a, a new strategy for uh, HTTP upgrade needs to be invented. Uh, I do know that you can't do it at all over AJP, so uh, it must be it must be mod proxy HTTP which can do it. Yes. Uh, HTTP does does not allow that. In fact, to the weight. Written. It's an old protocol which have been invented long time ago, so we would probably need to add to, in to improve it in order to be able to, to use it. Uh, the other thing is that in mod proxy, there's a, a WebSocket proxy in theory, but uh, I, uh, I didn't have time to test it, and this is something we plan to test at some point. But uh, it I have asked, and normally... It yeah, yeah, it makes some assumption. It's supposed to support the upgrade, but uh, I wasn't able to get it working. And I was asking, and uh, 
someone tell me it must work, so I must be must have been either doing wrong or I make the wrong assumption with my URL. I will do that. <laughs> uh, there was a question earlier in the back. Yes. Uh, so with the the problems you are having with your system, are you going to redo these benchmarks? Or are you going to extend them? And it would be nice to see like latency, or even uh, like there could be effects between a certain proxy module and a certain connector. I know that's a lot of permutations and a lot of hours, but uh, that would be interesting to see. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is that uh, a lot of time, and uh, uh, I'm I need to borrow a very powerful machine because basically. We can't do that in the cloud because basically we want to test the performance of something which is going to be used in the cloud. So uh, I need to get slots on the machine. I need to get the right network. Uh, I have a bunch of programs to make different kind of tests. Uh, I, I made uh, I helped the university local my local university to make a publication on the uh, latency thingy and on the distribution of the load uh, of Tomcat and uh, of a Tomcat plus a proxy. Uh, it was not the, uh, let's say, what we expected to present, so I won't speak, but, uh, I won't speak about it, but uh, this is something I can propose uh, in the next Apache Con. Okay. And to add to that, personally, I, I'd like to do our future testing using JMeter, which has much better concurren concurrency than AB. Yeah, There's Mar Mark's shaking his head. I'm not sure if he's agreeing or disagreeing. <laughs> really? All right. Well, then maybe switching won't help. <laughs> okay. That's not going to be a problem for me. <laughs> I want to test Tomcat. <laughs> and the first try is like basically uh, I was testing Apache Bench. I have made a some SSL tests and basically uh, at some point uh, Apache Bench uh, ran out of entropy because it's the box is a server. It does not have uh, anything else than network. And if you just start uh, Apache Bench in a loop trying to make some load and at some point you have no entropy and it was thinking something like uh, 20 seconds to make the first request. Then I uh, was first looking at Tomcat saying, oh, shit, there must be something wrong. And then after thinking a bit more, I say, no, it's not Tomcat. So it's, it's very difficult to make uh, tests. And uh, you can really have a result look, that look very weird. And uh, I've tried my best in order not to have something weird. Uh, trust me that I've been doing a lot of tests before having something that could be presented. And uh, I've tried to... Uh, I tell the truth, like the, the one, you see, you can't reproduce them. It looks like to be random. And when you start to have enough threads, then you have something where you can speak about it. So uh, ne next time I will do something like that, I will use a bunch of uh, thread. I will use some Java program, uh, and we try to use more nodes in order to create the load. Again, saturating your network is a good problem to have. If, you're, if, if the network is the problem, well, as a developer, that means it's somebody else's problem to deal with, right? Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, if you're, if you're not killing your CPU and, uh, uh, and you know, if, if you're not running out of resources on the machine, um, that's, a, that's a good position to be in. Are there any other questions? See if we can pull that up. I'm pretty sure that uh, we have to go to the cloud for that.
Yeah, I, I have the microphone. So we were doing uh, some tests with. Uh, to c uh, my first idea was to compare the different uh, Tomcat, and the uh, with the GVM which is advised in the well, which is with the GVM which is corresponding uh, to the Tomcat we're running, like uh, uh, with the Tomcat six, the GVM the Java s uh, five, and with Tomcat seven, the Java seven, and uh, with Tomcat eight, uh, what I with Tomcat eight. Uh, Java 7. And uh, the idea was first to try to see if the, uh, uh, Java was improving, like the performance were getting better when we get a new version of Java. Uh, we don't have it? Okay, so we don't have those slides. Um, uh, what we have seen is that basically the um, changing uh, from uh, Tomcat uh, 6 to uh, seven didn't uh, show any difference. Basically, the GBM seems to be performing uh, the same way. And when we change to uh, <coughs> Tomcat 8 and uh, uh, Java 7, then we have a big difference when uh, we uh, increase the load, uh, when we increase the size of the file because of the send file. And uh, it's something like a big difference. So uh, this is also why uh, we are very happy that uh, in Tomcat 8, the default connector is the uh, NIO one. And, oh yeah, here are the slides. So, um, so uh, this is a kind of, uh, let's say, a, a, a thread test a local. So we see, even with one thread, uh, as soon as the send file is starting, and the performance are really boosted. So send file is uh, very, very important. Send file is something very cool because basically, basically, uh, what? Yeah, I have to adjust the right. Away. Like that? Uh, is that better? Yeah. Okay, because I can't hear myself. That's an issue. <laughs> uh, um, so, um, send file is something very good because basically, send file uh, is uh, really the work is done by the kernel. So, uh, you spare all the time. Uh, uh, that uh, you have uh, switching between the user space and the kernel space. Okay. I, th I think I am I'm done. So uh, use the default connector. Um, we've done it well. It's uh, we we test it and uh, we show that it's uh, it's good. So you see, increasing the number of threads, it's really. So really, you see that the uh, Tomcat 6 and Tomcat 7 are performing the same way, even they're on a different uh, GBM. Even increasing the number of threads. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know why Tomcat probably had something wrong in the test. Like, um, But really, you, you, you see that uh, Tomcat 6 and Tomcat 7 are really uh, be should seem to be behaving exactly the same way. And those tests are, are, are done not at the same time. I mean, it, it's... So there's nothing weird happening on the machine. It's and it's. Uh, well th I think this 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 is not reproducible. But <laughs> okay. So with thousand thread. Okay. Thank you everybody for coming. Appreciate your time.